And I would love to have a real conversation with you about the issues. You've noted you think Republicans are afraid to debate you or talk to you or discuss the issues with you. Not only am I eager to discuss the issues with you, I'm willing to offer $10,000 to your campaign today. Wow. All right. First, the challenge, and then the rejection. Conservative commentator Ben Shapiro calling for a debate with Democratic Socialist Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. He wants to debate her. He wants to debate her on the issues. The New York congressional candidate take an issue with Ben Shapiro tweeting out, just like catcalling, I don't owe a response to unsolicited requests from men with bad intentions. And also like catcalling, for some reason, they feel entitled to one. Whoa, all right. We called uh, Ocasio-Cortez and we asked her to come on the show. She has yet to respond, but you know who did respond? None other than Ben Shapiro for his first interview since that tweet. Ben, it's good to see you. Good to see you. Making first of all, I, I just want to know she, quickly. She's making news with you here. Say, go ahead. Yeah, say. Uh, well, quick, quick comment. First of all, how dare you catcall Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez by inviting her on your show? <laughs> I mean, how dare you? That's sexism in action right there. <laughs> yeah, apparently. You know, what do you think of that, though? I mean, to use that term, which, um, you know, that's just to, to remind everyone, a woman's walking down the street and someone, you know, whistles or something, that's catcalling. Uh, how is what you did asking her to have an intellectual debate on the actual issues, how is that in any way relevant or similar uh, to a catcall? <laughs> Uh, cat calling must be very weird in Queens. I don't know if they're like construction <laughs> workers standing on street corners and shouting to women, hey, baby, want to have an hour-long public conversation about trade policy and the vagaries of Viennese economics versus neo-Marxist economics? It, it, gets, it gets strange in her district, apparently. But again, this is, this is so many folks on the left jumping to a sort of intersectional defense in which anybody who requests a discussion or a debate must be evil by their very nature, right? I'm a man, therefore I am catcalling her, even though as an Orthodox Jew, I have never catcalled a woman in my entire life. Uh, it, it's catcalling because I guess if I suggest that I want to have a conversation, I'm demanding a response. Well, every request is a request. All she had to say here was, nah, that would have been fine. I mean, she's got that prerogative, but she, she, she goes around talking about though? how... I mean, that's part of a platform, Absolutely. right? Everybody's a victim, and, and, you know, we need to take as much money as we can from everybody else to redistribute it. That's what socialism is about. So is she just playing that victim card? No question. And, and the fact that she feels the necessity to go to this particular card, right, to, to, to play the I'm a, I'm a female and therefore I'm being victimized, this is like catcalling. The fact she goes there, instead of just saying, you know what, I'm not interested in debate, the reason she didn't say the latter is because she didn't want to look like she was afraid. Uh, and she's been going around on, on the Internet, suggesting that people like Ali Stuckey are afraid of her when they make satire about her or that people on the right are deeply afraid of her perspective. And then the minute that somebody says, you know what, I, I'm willing to have a discussion or a debate with you. And not only that, just to make it worth your time, I'll give money to charity or your campaign. Yeah. Then it's all of a sudden catcalling if, if you suggest such a thing. It's pretty amazing. Well, it, you know, I, I first saw that and it didn't even make sense to me because of the use of the word catcall and the fact that you actually were asking her to have a civil conversation in a real debate. But she's not going to do it. Why do you think she's not going to do it, Ben? Well, I mean, I don't think there's a lot of upside for her, to be frank. I mean, if she, if she were to get into a discussion with somebody who asks her tough questions, I don't think she has the information or, or the philosophy at her disposal to actually answer those questions well. And she knows that, which is why her best move here would have been either to just ignore or to say no, and then everybody would move on with their life. But instead, uh, it turned into her invoking victim status, which you know rallies the base. There's no question folks in the media are very excited about this. If you look at the leftist response to her tweet, it's Ocasio-Cortez responds the way every Democrat should respond to anybody on the right who wants to have a discussion. And then they wonder why more Americans are turning away from the intersectional left than ever. Yeah, you know, Ben, it, one of the things that has always made us great is an appreciation for some kind of intellectual diversity, right? Being able to have civil debates, being able to share ideas. I mean, that's how we evolve. That's how we get better. But when one side isn't even willing to have the conversation, where does that leave us as a country? Yeah, that, that is the serious problem. And what's absurd is there are a bunch of folks on the left who responded to this entire controversy by tweeting me. These are mainstream left commentators saying, well, why don't you have me on your show? And I was like, okay. And they didn't really know how to respond to that because <laughs> I'm happy to have conversations with the folks on the I left. Know. I have conversations with folks on the left all the time. The left just doesn't want to open the Overton window enough to have conversations with anybody on the right. Yeah, well, because they automatically assume they're right, you're wrong. And they don't want to be proven otherwise with any kind of factual knowledge. I mean, look, you know, I, I think if you go out and you ask anyone, and you know this, brother, 
Americans believe in opportunity, right, and prosperity. It's just in our DNA. It's part of what this country was founded on. But you go around the world, and whether you're talking about Venezuela, or you're talking about Cuba, you're even talking about Denmark, where they charge well over 50% in taxes at the federal rate. So everybody's working for the government, where you pay 180% tax on a car, which is more than the cost of a car. Or, you know, you go to college and get a stipend. They plan on five years, but everybody's taking six plus years because you're being paid to go to a free college. It shows you when you look at their debt levels, even in Denmark, it just doesn't work, does it? Well, I mean, th th this is the serious problem with a lot of, of socialist philosophy, is that they're, they're constantly shifting the goalposts. You know, is it, is it that their education system is good or their, or their healthcare system is good? Uh, or is it that all of these systems are built atop a capitalist edifice that made these countries prosperous in the first place? And these are the conversations that actually should be had, yeah. but yeah. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez yeah. is not yeah. interested yeah. in having them, obviously. Hey, by the way, let me ask you about the harassment of conservative uh, commentators. Charlie Kirk, Candace Owens, what did you think about that one? Oh, well, I mean, obviously, that, that was insane. And I just, I told Charlie, I feel lucky that I eat in kosher restaurants where most of the people who are, are around me are members of my community because uh, I'd like to be able to get through a meal in peace. Apparently, Charlie and Candace cannot. Well, you know, Ben, I'll tell you one thing. Had you debated her, my money's on you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it would have been fun. would have been fun. Oh, well. All right. Thank you so much. It's good to see you. Thank you for being here. You too. First.